So welcome to this uh, spiritual Sunday, and today we are discussing the glories of Lord Nityananda. Nityananda Prabhu ki today is part two, and this session is the session is dedicated to His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada. The founder Acharya of Worldwide Hare Krishna Movement. Shila Prabhupada Ki. Let's start with prayers. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya <coughs> Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Udhiraye before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is a very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances unto the personality of Godhead Narayana, unto Naranarayana Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and unto Srila Vyasadev, the author. Nashta Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki. By regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed. And loving service unto the personality of Godhead, who is praised with transcendental songs, is established as an irrevocable fact. As we did yesterday, we will chant this. Um, Verse and then get into Nityananda Prabhu's pastime. Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya 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 Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda So welcome to this uh, special session today on uh, Nityananda Trayadasi Appearance Day. As we have um, the devotional, the festival of devotional bliss, which is tomorrow, we're just preparing ourselves. In fact, our festival celebration began yesterday with the session. Even before that, when we are preparing for this festival, such a wonderful festival. The festival of devotional bliss. Now, to introduce who Nityananda Prabhu is, which Prabhu did yesterday, great job. But I would come to Nityananda later because he is so special, he is so merciful, he is uh, he is just so amazing. My God, it's uh, so we, we need to understand a little bit more about. It. But why should we do that? As the title of this festival says, the festival of devotional bliss. I want to start with this uh, picture, historic picture, once in a lifetime, once in a millennium of Brahma, something like this happens. The sages, not one or two, huge number have assembled. And what is their goal in life? They just want to know what's the uh, ultimate good for people in general. And they are asking questions, one after another. They're asking six questions to this great exalted personality on whom my cursor is now pointing, Sutta Goswami. 
And Sutta Goswami, before he begins to answer, something very dramatic which happened. Yesterday I was sharing with someone. Very dramatic before he begins to speak. So, before he begins to speak, he says, Sadhu, Sadhu. You know, the word Sadhu in Sanskrit doesn't mean only sages. It means awesome. Wow. You know, sometimes we say, wow, what is it? To me. He was so joyful. He was so ecstatic. He was so, he felt, wow, this is what it is. What is it that those questions that the sages asked that gave this kind of an expression from Sutta Goswami? It's worth knowing. And Bhagavatam talks about this. Munayo sadhu prashtoham bhavad bhir loka mangalam yat kritah krishna samprashno yenatma suprasidati. Actually, this verse is a clue. I mean, it is such a potential verse. Um, Sutta Goswami in response to the questions asked by the sages of Naimisharanya, I saying, Sadhu, wonderful, wow. Dunayo sadhu prashtoham, bhavad bhir loka mangalam. This is meant for loka mangalam of the universe. Bhavad bhir loka mangalam. Why, why did he say so much wow and all? What is it? Yat krita krishna sam prashno. All the questions that you've asked are related to Krishna. What is the big deal if it is related to Krishna? Yenatma suprasidati. Actually, when we discuss, when we get a chance, opportunity to talk about Krishna, when we hear, when we discuss, our heart becomes satisfied. Yenatma suprasidati. There is no other way. Actually, there is absolutely no way. No matter how much we want this, that, this much, that thing. There's no other way that one can get that satisfaction. O oh, Sages, I have been justly questioned by you. Your questions are worthy because they relate to Lord Krishna and so are of relevance to the world's welfare. Only questions of this sort are capable of completely satisfying the self. I want to bring a distinction between uh, happiness or bliss and something that we seek in this material world called pleasure. Right. We often look for some kind of tickle fast food, which is, you know, which looks so attractive and we want to indulge a movie or we go and drink or we do something where, you know, our senses are constantly hankering for the sense objects. And when the senses meet the sense objects, we think that is happiness. We just think it's actually pleasure. And there is a significant difference between pleasure and happiness, pleasure or that form of soul. And that thing, when we get that happiness, that satisfaction, that bliss, it is related to our soul. Even if we look back in our lives, in our journey of Krishna consciousness, there are those moments where we come and we hear or we participate in some festival, do some devotional service, satisfies us, it nourishes us. So huge difference between happiness and bliss happiness or bliss versus pleasure. Actually, um, material world is so designed that we are bound to get sufferings. Every step, every nook and corner, there is suffering. But in the same time, we can experience bliss if we do some things. Let's take an example. Uh, when um, the beginning of 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, Sukadev Goswami tells this to Parikshit that what happens when somebody is taking to this Krishna Katha, how it is you know, so wonderful. Actually, uh, that hankering, those hankering for pleasure continues in this material world. 
But here is the verse where it is mentioned, Nivritta Tarshair. Tarshair is that uh, Trishna is hankering or that thirst, thirst for this material pleasure. It's a conditioned living entity is born with that kind of a thirst to enjoy. But Nivritta, one becomes freed from that Tarshair, from that Trishna, from that hankering. Nivritta Tarshair, Upagiya Mana, it comes to a stop. By how, what? By just hearing Krishna Katha, this opportunity to come together and hear Bhavo Sudha Chotra Manobhira. And this medicine, mind you, a very different uh, aspect or characteristic of this medicine is this medicine, unlike most of the medicines in the world, which are bitter, which people don't like, it's a painful thing. This is sweet medicine. Actually, in uh, when I was a child, my father was a big fan of homeopathy medicine. And he would say, you have to take this three times a day, three, three tablets or three, something else they say, globules or something. And I never take, I never take three. I, I don't remember having taken any time three. We always more than that. Because it is sweet, right? Put it in your mouth. It is uh, so nice. So it is not just sweet. Manu Abhirama. It's a pleasure. It's a, it's a, it's a festival. It's a celebration for the mind. Bhavo Sodha Chotra Mano Bhirama Ka Uttama Shoka Gunanubada Kuman Virajeta Vinapa Shoka. So, as I mentioned, this medicine is a sweet medicine, like homeopathy medicine. Very interestingly, uh, this picture of Vrindavan, something it uh, tells us a very powerful thing. If you look at this picture where Krishna and Balaram, and along with all the cowherd boys, they are actually going for grazing the cows in the morning. And all the elderly cowherd gopis, they are morose. They're very sad. They are uh, they are worried or they are sad or they are morose that they will not be able to have the sight of Krishna and Balaram. They are going away. And in this connection, actually, it's a very interesting thing because Vrindavan, despite the fact that this being Vrindavan, the residents of Vrindavan are also suffered. Are, are also subjected to sufferings, are also subjected to you know this kind of material distress. But how do they handle it? What do they do? Realize the clue. And there's a very beautiful verse which comes about this Brajastriya in the 10th canto. Sri Sukha Vacha Evam Brajastriyo Rajan Krishna Leela Nugayati Mire Mire Hasu Tachitas they're feeling that separation. They're feeling the pangs of you know not seeing Krishna and Balaram for the whole day. But then they're doing something by which they're able to relish. Evam Brajas Triyo Rajan Krishna Leela Nugayati. They come together and they sing. They sing what? Krishna Leela. Krishna Leela Nugayati. When they come together and chant, the glories of Krishna, the pastimes of Krishna, their mind is becoming full, it's becoming uh, joyful, it is becoming, uh, it's, a, it's a festival, it's an enlivening thing. Um, they continuously sing about the pastimes of Krishna and those ladies' minds and hearts absorbed in him were filled with great festivity. Similar thing is mentioned by uh, Pillo Mangal Thakur in the very famous words of uh, Govinda Damodar Madhaviti, where, where he mentions Grihe Grihe Gopa Badhu Kadamba Sarve Oge Punyani Namanti Nityam Govinda Damodar Madhaviti Govinda Damo Dharma Dhaveti Govinda Damo Dharma Dhaveti Actually, if we want our soul to nourish, to really experience that satisfaction, that is not there in this material world, which is imperfect, which is designed to you know, frustrate us, which is designed to give us this miseries. It's only by coming in association and hearing. That is why that Sutta Goswami seated in that place is saying, wow! Awesome. What a, what a question you have asked. 
वधु कदम्बा सर्वे मिलित्वा समवाय योगे गृह गृह गोप वधु कदम्बा सो ऑल दिस यू नो कावड़ गर्ल्स दे कम टुगेदर सर्वे मिलित्वा समवाय योगे दे आर डूइंग ए योगा थिंक व्हाट काइंड ऑफ योगा दिस कावड़ वुमेन आई मीन गोपीस व्हाट योगा दे कैन डू सर्वे मिलित्वा समवाय योगे punyani namani pathanti nityam nityam continuously they are chanting this punyani namani the names the fames the glories of krishna like govind damo dharma dhabeti we doing that they are they forgetting all their miseries so the power of holy name the power of hearing krishna katha is so wonderful no matter who you are in whatever state you are in in what kind of situation you are in it will give you pleasure it will give you solid satisfaction there's another words and uh, I'm, i'm just building it up to the festival of devotional eternal bliss the divine bliss of nityananda prabhu and we will see how wonderful this is this is again a verse which is often quoted by prabhupada from 10th can 10th can of shrimad bhagavatam iti nanda dayo gopa krishna rama katha muda urvanto rama manascha nabindan bhavavedanam this is this is talking about the situation of brajavasis or the residents of vrindavan who are constantly being attacked by this demons so demons so if uh, prabhupad writes in the purport of vrindavan a place like vrindavan is not free from the attack of the demons what to talk about places like shrewsbury boston massachusetts what is what what to talk about and that to in a age like this kali yuga where our mind itself has got so many demons main jata hu ho gaya mera aur nahi hota hai prabhu ne bol diya bahut bola mere ko main ja raha hu abhi i'll go back to vrindavan i'll go i'll do some all kinds of these are all minds cheat cheating tendencies minds excuses here the clue is iti nanda dayo gopa krishna rama katha muda urvanto rama manascha navindan bhavavedana so nanda adi gopas so all these gopas covered men they used to come and they used to discuss and hear krishna rama katha muda beautiful wonderful nectarian transcendental activities and pastimes of krishna and rama urvanto rama manascha there are three things which was happening because of that urvanto rama manascha navindan bhavavedana first thing is rama manas rama rama means it is to give them pleasure rama the word rama means eternal pleasure it gives pleasure manas it develops the attachment for uh, for krishna and rama for, for krishna and balaram they used to develop a sneha an attachment for rama and uh, krishna and then the third most important navindan bhavavedana bhavavedana are bound to be there every one of us who have taken birth in this material world is subjected to this threefold miseries and the four problems are going to come nobody is ex- exemption from that but navindan bhavavedana but because they were hearing and they were relishing this past times they are not being affected by this bhavavedana in this way all the cowherd men headed by nanda maharaj enjoyed topics about the past times of krishna and balaram with great transcendental pleasure and they could not even perceive material tribulations material tribulations do not spare anyone navindan bhava vedanam you can see this rama 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 mana enjoyed life and increased their affection for krishna and navindan they were not affected by this material tribulations like that so when we are here in this material world and we are constantly subjected to different kinds of tribulations what respite do we have it is very important that's why when devotees come together they discuss about krishna katha because there is a potency which gets released it satisfies your heart it satisfies your ears and that satisfaction is so nourishing pushti tushti everything comes from that uh, imagine you know there is a cricket match which is going on and in the cricket match um, the bowler is at its peak it's bowling really very nice so um, and the batsmen are not in their home country but in a foreign country and even the crowd is hostile because it's foreign country and um, 
the umpire assuming also is not very favorable so during the time when there is a change of over when these two batsmen come together and they talk what are they going to talk about are they going to talk about well you know what uh, that day uh, ankit put a message lata di died lata di passed away problem in afghanistan omicron is rising are they going to talk about this oh, they are very very they have to be when ultimately focused what going to be what is going to be the next delivery what's going to be the over how the field situation is going they cannot possibly talk about anything else other than you know talking about cricket similarly in our life also that you know imagine a stadium like it's kaliuga which is filled with disturbances hypocrisy there are so many challenges and when two devotees are getting a chance to come together we should talk about krishna ratna because that is ultimately our goal we want to go back home back to godhead we want to experience the krishna prema and that is available but unless we talk unless we discuss unless we relish unless we are focused then it's gone time is gone time is it's over there's a very powerful sentence by shila prabhupada in one of his uh, writings he says disturbance is the signature of kali disturbance is the signature of kali people are always disturbed mera service chhin liya mere se main kar raha tha mera service chala gaya main ro raha hu abhi main chala jata hu somebody says main kar nahi pa raha hu main capable nahi hu main bhi jata hu sab chale jate hain then what is so actually this this is what is the signature of kali you don't agree with this there is a very beautiful uh, words written by pravodhananda saraswati in uh, a place called chaitanya chandramrita and this is quoted by krishnadas kaviraj goswami very very interesting words. so this uh, verse spoken by uh, pravodhananda saraswati he is telling samsara dukha jaladahu patitasya kama krodhadi nakrama karai kavali kritasya durvasana nigaditasya niraharas nisra nishraya चैतन्य चंद्र मम देवली samsara dukha jaladho so we are there in samsara which is con- which is always compared with an ocean samsara dukha jaladho so we are there in the midst of this ocean and how is the water yesterday prabhu was telling about milk ocean about salt ocean about so many ocean so here he is telling dukha jaladho this is a ocean of miseries samsara dukha jaladho acha it is a dukha ocean then okay you why don't you cross why don't you swim and go no no i can't swim because i have got so many bad habits i'm addicted to so many negative things my hands and legs are tied patidasya kama my hands and tied my hands and legs are tied with incessant desires patidasya kama so first of all it is dukha jaladho on top of that patidasya kama my hands and legs are tied then then if that is not enough even if you know i am able to do some <clears throat> i want to just put some pressure and want to swim even if i am you know, that's whatever my, my hands are tied my legs are tied i'm making some efforts but is telling that in that ocean there are some sharks and then there are some whales who are those krodhadi nakrama kare kavali kritasya it is surrounded by krodh adi krodhadi nakrama kare kama krodha loha moha mada matsari these are all there like sharks to attack us durvashana nigaditasya nishrayasya then i am completely helpless but in that helpless situation in this material world which is all which is what, what is our position unfortunately we don't even realize that but even if somebody realizes and calls out chaitanya chandra mama dehi padavalambam chaitanya chandra just loudly chaitanya 
at Chaitanya Chandra, Mama Dehi Padamalam, he will take me out of this material ocean. Samsara Dukkha Jaladahu Patitasya Kama Rodhadi Nakrama Karai Kavali Kratasya. I'm chained by sinful, sinful desires. We have, I mean, our life is so, look at the predicament. First of all, we are there in Dukkha Jaladahu, in the ocean of miseries. On top of that, we are shackled, chained by sinful desires. Only sinful desires. These are all, there are some habits, there are some things which we are not able to overcome. I know that this is not right for me, I should not be doing, but I'm not able to overcome, chained by sinful desires. Then, I have fallen into the painful ocean of repeated birth and death. The sharks and crocodiles of lust and anger are devouring me alive. I have no shelter. Oh Lord Chaitanya Chandra, please rescue me. Please give me shelter at your feet. He's saying Chaitanya Chandra, but it is actually Chaitanya Chandra and and Nityananda Prabhu. Nityananda Prabhu, here he comes and he distributes this Mercy, causelessly. No qualification seen, nothing. In fact, our biggest qualification is how fallen we are. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes, of course, he distributes this uh, freely, this Krishna Nam, and uh, he distributes this love of Godhead. But whom does he distribute? If you see, you know, the interactions that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had, he spoke to Prabodhananda Saraswati who was the Mayavada Sanyasi Guru. He spoke to Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya, who was a scholarly person. He converted Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami. They were also exalted personalities. He spoke to Ramananda Rai, who was also a great uh, you know, devotee of the Lord. But who were the candidates of Nityananda Prabhu? Nityananda Prabhu even goes to the people who are rejected by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, whom Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to kill finish them off. They don't even deserve. They become the candidates of Nityananda Prabhu. That is why there is a very beautiful song which is there, a Vaishnava song. Daya karo more nitai, daya karo more agatira gati nitai sadhu loke bode. Sadhu loke all the sadhus, the sages are confirming, concluding. Daya karo more nitai. Oh nitai. Oh Nityananda Prabhu please have mercy on me. Daya karo more nitai, daya karo more agatira gati nitai. Agati just person who doesn't have any aim, who's just directionless, who doesn't have, who cannot even understand, after even understanding, who cannot even practice, who cannot do anything, who just completely helpless, uh, no strength, just a precarious person, agatira gati nitai. To, to deliver them, Nityananda Prabhu is there. Agatira gati nitai, sadhu loke. This is again from Chaitanya Charitam Rita. Just what happens when somebody just chants loudly Goranga and Nitai? Just these two names. Goranga Nitai, e bale ek bar. Ananta karma dosha anta haita. So if we just loudly chant Goranga Nitai. One more time. Goranga Nitai. Goranga Nitai. E bale ek bar. Ananta karma dosha anta haita. If just one chants once, Gauranga and Nitai, Ananta Karma Dosha Anta Haita. Millions of, he's telling the most fortunate person who chants the names of Nityananda and Gauranga just once, immediately destroys the unlimited sinful reactions accumulated for unlimited numbers of lives in the past. Unlimited lives in the past? Actually, that is the reason Prabhupada, our Acharyas have given that we should chant the Panchatattva Mantra before chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra because there is offense against the holy name of the Lord. So there is no offense against the chanting of Panchatattva Maha Panchatattva Mantra. Gauranga Nitai Ebole Ek Bar Ananta Karma Dosa Anta Haita. So now that we have come, the hero of our uh, festival of our day today, Nityananda Prabhu, we heard what is his, a little bit whatever his position, let us understand. I want to talk about one very important aspect of Nityananda Prabhu and his role and his position in our lives. Let's try to appreciate that in next um, sometime that we have. Nityananda Prabhu actually appears with Lord Ram as Lakshman, as his younger brother. 
and when he appears as lakshman his mood is how i can serve lord ram continuously uninterruptedly a great example of that the 14 years of exile that lord ram had uh, lakshman never even uh, blinked his eyelids he never slept always gari when uh, the supreme lord comes as krishna then uh, nityananda prabhu appears as balaram and when uh, the lord appears as chaitanya mahaprabhu then he appears as nityananda prabhu actually you can't see or not i don't know but in the background if you see they have a nice flower here um for the dance is actually of course those who are present here sitting here you can see that the very significant role which nityananda prabhu plays or balaram plays or lakshman plays let's see lakshman first there is an incident which happens in ramayana where um uh, bali was killed by lord ram and sugriva has been made the king and then sugriva was supposed to find the whereabouts of krishna uh, of uh, mother sita but then after his coronation is done he was busy enjoying his life he was drinking he forgot it was chaturmasya time and he was uh, celebrating he was drinking and all those kind of things at that point in time lakshman goes very angrily wakes him up and says i'll just finish you off you forgotten your duty of you know you promised something to lord ram and you forgotten what are you doing actually what this simple incident uh, tells us it's a very important thing in our life all of us are like sugriva who have forgotten our relationship with krishna that krishna prem which is eternally present nitya siddha krishna prem sadhya kavunai shravanadi suddha chitta karayoda it is there dormant in everybody every one of our heart but we are sleeping we need a guru we need that guru tattva we need that spiritual master who can awaken us who awakens us to krishna who awakens us to our real constitutional position who awakens that dormant krishna prema like lakshmana did to sugriva like shila prabhupada is doing it for all of us it is dormant still but the tendency even after having come in touch with ram sugriva fell you know he went astray when he was doing something so it is the, the tendency is always there that is why always eternally we have to hold to the lotus feet of nityananda to the lotus feet of shila prabhupada when he appeared as balaram very interesting one incident which happened uh, if you all know this there was one person by name romaharshana sukha who was giving this bhagavatam lecture and uh, balaram when he entered into the arena he didn't even bother to get up from his position he thought who is this balaram one big speaker i'm talking in that verse in that connection bhagavatam mentions actually even though romaharshana sutta was talking bhagavatam and he was a very qualified person to speak but he was not free from two things one was this prideness no humility and there were other anarthas when bhagavatam says so what did balaram do just took a piece of grass and just touched here and his head was beheaded but when the same balaram or even you know when uh, he goes to um, uh, hastinapur um, and there was this uh, verbal duel between the koravas and balaram he was about to drag hastinapur to yamuna with his plow but the same balaram when he appears as nityananda prabhu there is something very drastically different which happens unlike lakshman and unlike uh, balaram he comes as akrodha paramananda he doesn't exhibit any anger that same grass that he used to cut the head of uh, romaharshana sutta he is putting in, in his teeth and he is begging people bolo krishna bhajo krishna karo krishna sikshan the mood of nityananda prabhu is so different and even chaitanya mahaprabhu that is why these past times are so relishable 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is considered to be the most munificent, most merciful incarnation. And Nityananda Prabhu even goes one step more. And he does this without you know, looking for any kind of credit. He goes and knocks at the door, people open, and then he'll fall down at the feet and tell people, please chant the names of the Lord. So we will see this in a few of the uh, uh, past times. But mind you, I think in uh, one of the uh, Kartik festival time when we were having some uh, uh, every Kartik meditation every day in the evening, there was one verse I had spoken about the beautiful, sweet, charming sound of the flute of Krishna. Even the deer gets attracted to that. But to relish that beautiful, melodious sound of Krishna's flute, one has to go through the plow of Nityananda Prabhu. Plow of Nityananda, when it is plowed, your heart is plowed, it's, it's a painful thing. But only when it is plowed that the Bhakti Lata beach can go. And then it has to be, it has to be properly, uh, one has to water it with chanting and hearing that the Bhakti Lata beach sprouts. Unless the plow is used in the heart and the heart is not ready or it is not if it, is not, if it is not cooperating, then the Bhakti Lata will never sprout. It is, a, it is a slightly painful process. But to awaken our dormant Krishna Prema, this is necessary. This is required. Otherwise, all those comfortable life, oh, I, everybody should treat me nicely. Everybody should praise me. My service should be noticed. Why did they take away my service? Why they are not noticing I am so nicely in, engaged in devotional service? Nobody cares for all those things. I want to tell you some a very interesting pastime from Chaitanya Charitamrit for, uh, for our own purification. I mean, there are countless pastimes of Nityananda Prabhu. We can just go on and on and on and then still it will be uh, insufficient. But I have highlighted a very interesting, uh, uncommon pastime of um, Nityananda Prabhu. But there is a very great learning from this. So this is uh, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is sending different people to different places or there are different devotees who are desiring to come and stay with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he is at Nilachala. There is a specific instruction that he is giving to Nityananda Prabhu. So what is he saying? Prativarsa Nilachala tumi na asiba gaude rahi mura icha safala kariva Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is telling Nityananda Prabhu, do not come to Jagannath Puri every year, but stay in Bengal and fulfill my desire. What is so big deal about this? Do not come to Jagannath Puri every year, but stay in Bengal and fulfill my desire. Very interestingly, the purport, Prabhupada is saying, the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is to spread the only medicine effective in this fallen age of Kali, the chanting of Hare Krishna Mahamantra. The mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is to spread. It is not to sit in our comfortable place in our environment or somewhere. Okay, now something happened, some disturbance here. Let me go back. Where will I go? I'll go to Vrindavan. I'll live a comfortable life there. I'll have my own flat. I'll live there. I'll go to some other place. I'll go to my... Bangalore, I'll go to some other place. I'll, I'll be there. Mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is to spread the only medicine effective in this fallen age of Kali, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. There is a very interesting thing which Prabhupada mentions in the purport. If you see, he's questioning, Prabhupada is questioning, does this mean, actually Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he said that Nityananda Prabhu not to come to Puri, does this mean that the Lord was refusing Nityananda Prabhu a fortunate opportunity? The answer is a big emphatic no. One who is a faithful servant of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu must execute his order even if one has to sacrifice going to Jagannath Puri to see Lord Jagannath there. In other words, it is a greater fortune to carry out Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's order than to satisfy one's senses by seeing Lord Jagannath. It's a very important thing. Because often in our life, our mind gives this kind of excuses, this kind of, okay, something is happening here, something, okay, let me go back to my comfortable place where I was. No, no, here Prabhupada is writing, one who is a faithful servant of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu must execute his order even if one has to sacrifice going to Jagannath Puri. 
to see Lord Jagannath there. In other words, it is a greater fortune to carry out Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's order. It is a greater fortune to carry out Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's order than to satisfy one's senses by seeing Lord Jagannath. Then something else Prabhupada mentioned in the Chaitanya Chaitanya that I just mentioned. Um, preaching Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's cult throughout the world is more important than staying in Vrindavan or Jagannath Puri for one's own personal satisfaction. Spreading Krishna consciousness is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission. Therefore, his sincere devotees must carry out his desire. Preaching Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's cult throughout the world is more important than staying in Vrindavan or Jagannath Puri. And then, Prabhupada quotes, Prithivide Achayata Nagaradi Gram Sarvatra Prachara Hulva Murana. The devotees of Lord Chaitanya must preach Krishna consciousness in every village and town in the world. That will satisfy the Lord. It is not that one should act whimsically for his own personal satisfaction. This order comes down through the parampara system and the spiritual master presents this order to the disciple so that he can spread the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It is the duty of every disciple to carry out the order of the bona fide spiritual master and spread Lord Chaitanya's message all over the world. I wanted to highlight this because this is something very, very important for us to remember because we are not here for a comfortable life. And when we take that extra step and uh, go out and preach and spread this message, we become the recipient of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy because it's a, it's a preaching mission. Whoever it is, even if it is, you know, it is coming at the cost of the sacrifice of not being able to be there in a place which we like to be it is still far superior. So that's why the devotees of Lord Chaitanya must preach Krishna consciousness in every village and town in the world. That will satisfy the Lord. It is not one should act whimsically for his own personal satisfaction. This order comes down through the parampara system and the spiritual master presents these orders to the disciples so that he can spread the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It is the duty of every disciple to carry out the order of bona fide spiritual master and spread Lord Chaitanya's message all over the world. Then... Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Taha Siddhi Kare Hena Anya Na Dekhiye Amara Duskara Karma Doma Haite Hai. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continued, You can perform a task that even I cannot do. But for you, I cannot find anyone in Gaurades who can fulfill my mission there. So actually, delivering people like Jagai Madhai, even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu thought, you know, he invoked his. Sudarshan Chakra to kill, to finish Jagai Madhai. But so that's why he's telling, you can perform a task that even I cannot do. But for you, I cannot find anyone in Gaurades who can fulfill my mission there. Very interesting purport. Actually, very long purport. 16.64 is very easy to remember. 16 rounds we chant uh, daily. And earlier, Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur had given instruction to chant 64. This is Madhya Lila 1664. And this one is 1665. And the purport, Prabhupada writes something very, very powerful. Similarly, if one is true to Gaur Nithai's service in the disciplic succession, what happens when somebody serves Nithai Gauranga? Similarly, if one is true to Gaur Nithai's service in the disciplic succession, he can even excel Nityananda Prabhu's service. Like Nityananda Prabhu is delivering Jagai and Madhai, even which you know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying Duskaram, Similarly, Srila Prabhupada, when he came, he was delivering thousands of Jagais and Madhais. Similarly, each one of us, when we take up to this process of uh, spreading this movement or being part of this mission, serve Gaur Nithai sincerely in disciplic su succession, then what happens? Similarly, if one is true to Gaur Nithai's service in the disciplic succession, he can even excel Nityananda Prabhu's service. This is the process of disciplic succession. Nityananda Prabhu delivered Jagai and Madhai, but a servant of Nityananda Prabhu, by his grace, can deliver many thousands of Jagais and Madhais. That is the special benediction of the disciplic succession. One who is situated in the disciplic succession can be understood by the result of his activities. This is also true. This is always true as far as the activities of the Lord and his devotees are concerned. Therefore, Lord Shiva says, Aradhanam Sarvesham Vishnu Aradhanam Param. Tasmat Parataram Devi Tadiyanam Samarchanam. Of all types of worship, worship of Lord Vishnu is best and better than the worship of Lord Vishnu is the worship of his devotees, the Vaishnavas. 
so basically the lord wants his devotees to become more glorified the lord wants his devotees to do some of the things which he didn't do so that the devotees become more glorified and prabhupada gives the example of arjuna by the grace of vishnu a vaishnava can render better service than vishnu that is the special prerogative of a vaishnava the lord actually wants to see his servants work more gloriously than himself for instance on the battlefield of kurukshetra shri krishna provoked arjuna to fight because all the warriors on the battlefield were to die by krishna's plan krishna himself didn't want to take the credit rather he wanted arjuna to take credit therefore he asked him to fight and win fame tasmat tvam utishtha yasho labhasva jitva satrun bhumshwa rajyam samruddham maya vaite nihata purvam eta nimitta matram bhava sapya sanjya therefore get up prepare to fight and win glory conquer your enemies and enjoy a flourishing kingdom they are already put to death by my arrangement and you o sabhyasachi can be put can be but an instrument in the fight it's a very important instruction for all of us when we are engaged in this devotional service of shila prabhupada to not allow the lethargy or complacency to creep in or this feeling that i am doing a lot of things actually what are we doing that uh, prabhupada's recording if you would have seen what can we really offer to krishna we don't have even the bhakti in our heart something we are doing if we feel puffed up for doing that little thing in our life then we just lose the whole charm as i said it is a painful process like you know nityananda prabhu when you take his shelter when nityananda prabhu is plowing the heart is a painful thing but only when we go through that painful process and only when we are engaged in spreading this this mission of chaitanya mahaprabhu that the bhakti lata sprouts this is the secret chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, without chaitanya mahaprabhu's mercy we cannot get radha krishna prema and to get chaitanya mahaprabhu's mercy one has to get nityananda prabhu's mercy because nityananda prabhu is more merciful than chaitanya mahaprabhu distributing it to even agati a person who doesn't have any direction but to become a deserving recipient of nityananda prabhu's mercy one has to go through this little bit of austerity and you know allow those anarthas to come out of the heart then we then then one can experience the real krishna prem and the glory of worshiping chaitanya and nityananda prabhu as mentioned in this verse cannot be compared that's why there is a very beautiful uh, song which is written by gochanandas so there are countless songs Uh, there are a few uh, which i would uh, just read a little bit and say how uh, great fortune we have of engaging in devotional service of nitai and goranda not just ordinary exceptional so this song by lochana das he says uh, parama karuna bahudhuija nitai gora chandra sabavatar सरसीरोमणि सवावतार सरसीरोमणि केवल आनंद कंड परम करुणा एक्चुअली दे दीस टू एंबॉडीमेंट्स दीस टू पर्सनालिटीज द ओनली गोल इज देयर दे जस्ट वांट टू डिस्ट्रीब्यूट दिस कंपैशन परम गुरु आई मीन इफ यू रियली इफ यू सी इफ यू जस्ट सी द इंस्ट्रक्शंस ऑफ कृष्णा इन भगवत गीता देयर इज वन इंस्ट्रक्शन व्हिच कम्स Krishna binna vichalet which verse is that in sir third chapter from it Krishna binna vichalet at the last line this part from here not coming ियलचर 
don't disturb them don't unsettle them but in the purport of that actually prabhupad says that the devotees of krishna are more compassionate even krishna because krishna goes by logic he says ye yatha maam prapadyante tam stateva bhajami as you surrender unto me i will reciprocate sarva dharman parityajya maam ekam sharanam bhaja aham tvam sarva pape bhya mokshe syami ma sucha only when you surrender 100% sarva dharman parityajya i will protect you aham tvam sarva pape bhya mokshe syami but chaitanya mahaprabhu and nityananda prabhu do not put any conditions they come they are more compassion actually in one of the places when uh, uh what is his name this uh, ambarish maharaj and uh, durvasamani when durvasamani goes to uh, lord vishnu for protection durvasamani say uh, lord vishnu says well i am actually aham bhakta paradhina why i am aham bhakta paradhina because of two things one my devotees do not want even liberation from material world second they have got so much of compassion more compassion than even me and this is the embodiment of compassion parama karuna pahudvija nitai gorachandra sab avatara sara siramani this is the they are, they, they are the crest jewels of all the incarnations why because kevala ananda kanda they are full of ananda they are full of bliss bhajo bhajo bhai chaitanya nitai sudradha biswasa kori vishaya chhadiya sera se maji जिया vishaya rasa is there in every species of life nothing great even in our previous lives we also have enjoyed vishaya chadiya but to get a rasa in hari in enchanting the names of the lord vishaya uh, chadiya sera se majiya mukhe bolo hari hari it's not a small thing and then uh, lochanda says dekho o re bhai trigubane nai emono dayal data pashu pakhi jhure पसाण बीदरे पशु पक्षी झूरे पसाण बीदरे सुनी जान रघुन गाथा पशु पक्षी इवन द एनिमल्स एंड द बर्ड्स दे आर क्राइंग दे आर शेडिंग टियर्स पसाण बीदरे इवन द स्टोन्स इज यू नो इट्स गेटिंग क्रैक्ड पसाण बीदरे सुनी जान रघुन गाथा द ग्लोरीज ऑफ चैतन्य एंड नितय आर सो वंडरफुल लुक एट आवर स्टोन हार्टेड it's not melting dekho re bhai trigubane nai emona dayal data we cannot find anybody else in this universe nobody else trigubane nai emona dayal data pashu pakhi chure pasana vidare suni janra guna data samsare majiya rohili poriya se pade nahi lo asa अपन कर्म भुंजाए समान अपन कर्म भुंजाए समान को हो ए लोचन दास तो गेट आवर प्रीकेरियस पोजीशन संसार में जी आई एम स्टिल इन दैट संसार आई एम इन आई एम इमर्स्ड इन दैट संसार आई एम नॉट एबल टू कम आउट संसार में जी रोहिली पोरी आई एम फॉलन आई डोंट हैव एनी टेस्ट आई डोंट हैव एनी दिस थिंग आई डोंट हैव i don't have even the good fortune of coming and hearing i don't have even the good fortune of telling i am calling out the names of nitai and goranga i'm not able to even sir sepode nahilo as i don't have any asa i don't have any conviction in holding to the lotus feet of nityananda prabhu apana karma bhunjaye samana because of my past karma i'm going through all these things i'm not able to come out kohay lochanada as this is lochanada and all they are they're speaking on on our behalf it's not like lochanada doesn't have this devotion in him Lochana Das is regretting that I am entrapped by sense gratification. That's not Lochana Das. It's Sadananda Das. Since I have no attraction for the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, then Yamaraj, the Superintendent of Death, is punishing me by not allowing me to be attracted by this feet. So on this uh, auspicious day of Nityananda Pradesi, I didn't want to get into so many wonderful pastimes. There are beautiful pastimes. In the evening, we will have some more uh, discussion of the pastimes. 
But I wanted to talk about this very important aspect of Nityananda Prabhu's role in our life. The importance of hearing Krishna Gata, nourishing our soul. Uh, how Nityananda Prabhu can, by without his mercy, how this Krishna brain, which is dormant, cannot be awakened. And unless that happens, forget about Krishna, forget about nothing will happen. So that is why following the instructions of Guru, following the instructions of spiritual master and Nityananda Prabhu, who is Adi Guru, is extremely important. Extremely important. And when we do that, we can actually experience the devotional bliss. The festival of devotional bliss is nothing but coming and chanting, hearing Krishna's pastimes and enjoying. So I'll stop here and see if you have any questions or comments. I wanted to sing another song, but I thought I will not be able to do that. <laughs> Akrodha Paramananda. Any question? Question, we will sing this. It's a very beautiful song, uh, also uh, written by Lothar Das. <clears throat> Actually, the song you can sing, I mean, the lyrics, uh, I'll just read this. The translation is very nice. So this is what I, exactly which I was telling Nityananda Prabhu when he appears, the same Balaram Tattva, when he appears as Nityananda, how he changes his position and how he's so humble. Akrodha Parmananda Nityananda Rai. Abhimana Sunya Nitai Nagare Bedai Adhama Patita Jiver Dware Dware Giya Hari Nama Maha Mantra Dichere Bilaya Jare de Ketare Kohe Dante Trinadhari Amare Kinia Laha Bala Gaurahari Eteboli Nityananda Bhume Gadi Jai Sonara Parvata Jena Late Lotai Hena avatara jare rati na jan mila locha ne bole se api ela aragela. First thing he's telling Adhama Patita, sorry, Akrodha Paramananda Nityananda Rai, Abhimana Sunya Nitai Nagare Beda, Akrodha Paramananda. The noble Lord Nityananda is never angry, for he is the personification of supreme transcendental bliss. Devoid of any concept of false ego, Nitai wanders about the town. So Abhimana Sunya Nitai Nagare Bedai is going, is uh, Akrodha Paramananda, full of this and no anger. Abhimana Sunya Nitai Nagare Bedai. Actually, sometimes we feel we are much better than Jagai and Malai. They were all sinful. If we look in our lives, if we go deeply into our own lives, we are worse than Jagai and Malai. Jagai and Malai were at, at least born in the family of Brahmanas. They were in the they were staying in the banks of Ganges. They were not doing any offense against holy name or uh, Vaishnavas, of course, they did. Nityananda Prabhu and they got the mercy. They were doing all sinful activities. But we do even far worse than them. Akrodha Paramananda Nityananda Rai Abhimana Sunya Nitai Nagare Bedai. So Nityananda Prabhu is going in the town Nagare Bedai. He is Abhimana Sunya. There is no pride. And Akrodha Paramananda, there is no anger. And he is full of devotional bliss. He is going. And what is he doing? Adhama Patita Jivere Dware Dware Giya. Adhama and Patita, all of us, in our doors is coming and knocking. Adhama Patita Jivere Dware Dware Giya, Harinama Maha Mantra Dichene Bilaya. He's telling, I brought this Harinam. Take, chant, and just go back. Don't rot here in this material world. Adhama Patita Jivere Dware Dware Giya, Harinam Maha Mantra Dichene Bilaya. Jare Dekhe Tare Kohe Dante Trinadhari. I told you that grass, he cut it the head of, you know, uh, Romaharsana Sutta. But here he's putting that grass in his. Uh, uh, 
between his teeth and he's telling jane dekho tare kahe dante tran dhari amara kiniya la bolo gaura hari uh, he exclaims to whoever he sees while holding straw between his teeth please purchase me by by worshiping gaura hari just chant the names of gauranga ete boli nityananda bhume gaadi jaye sonara parvat jena dhulate lotaye saying thus nityananda prabhu rolls about on the ground appearing like a golden mountain tumbling in the dust if somebody says just goranga and chants the name of the lord nityananda prabhu is rolling on the on the ground and then hena hena avatara jare ratina janmila lochana bale se papi ela aragela lochandas thakur says whoever has not experienced the awakening of affection for such an avatar as this that sinful person simply comes and goes uselessly in the cycle of repeated birth and death Uh, that's the beauty of nityananda prabhu and we are so fortunate that we have come not only in touch with nityananda prabhu by the mercy of shila prabhupan um chaitanya mahaprabhu and we are able to learn a little bit and understand this but how careful we should be in our life how um, how much of minute attention we should pay to this details in life this mercy of nityananda prabhu or guru is so important to get krishna prema maybe okay i have understood that i want to go back come back to god krishna prema krishna prema everybody has heard they talk about but how do you get that it is only possible by mercy of nityananda prabhu by holding on to his lotus feet by following the instructions of guru and this will happen any question Prabhu, can you tell briefly on the life of Nithyanand Prabhu? I mean, just oh. okay. Last uh, session we had discussed, but uh, he was born twelve, uh, thirteen years before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, fourteen seventy-three or seventy-four, and um, he was born in a place called Eka Chakra Dham, which is in Bengal. Any other thing that you know about Eka Chakra Dham other than it's the birthplace of Nithyanand Prabhu? Actually, Yeah, there is one. Uh, it's probably saying uh, I didn't know the first one, but uh, the wheel was hidden with Mataji also probably saying Eka Chakra. The the Pandavas uh, stayed there in Eka Chakra Dham, and there was that demon uh, Vakasura who used to eat a lot, whom Bhima killed. So the Eka Chakra Dham, uh, unlike you know some other uh, places of pilgrimage, is a very nice place. Where prasadam and all those things are very nicely taken care. I heard. So uh, that so okay, uh, Jagati. So uh, yeah, 1473, 1474 is when uh, Chaitanya Prabhu took birth, and he was there as as an associate of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu always. And when he used to participate in Kirtan, he used to roar in ecstasy, uh, Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So and he distributed his ecstasy to many many associates of Chaitanya by his mercy. Raghunath Das Goswami, Purushottam Thakur, uh, like that. There are many, many associates who got this Krishna brain, and not only them, he also delivered fallen souls like Jagai and Madhai. Not just Jagai Madhai, there are many actually, countless such. Okay. Uh-huh. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, if you actually, if you, if I just uh, collect the quotations from Chaitanya Charitamrita about just. chanting the glories of nityananda prabhu from chaitanya charitamrita even two three classes will be insufficient how much he is glorifying just to say nityananda prabhu or nitai and nitai goranga just nitai that word has got so much of potency okay
Sir, also Prabhupada, that's why he's clarifying in that purport. Uh, it is not about that particular incident that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Nityananda Prabhu that you be there in Puri, relevant there. No, he's, Prabhupada is explaining when somebody is given a mission to spread uh, holy name in some place, which may not be, even, you know, devotees in their hearts sometimes think, okay, I'll go back to Vrindavan. So, okay, Vrindavan, what you will do in Vrindavan? Vrindavan, Krishna's place. But what we don't realize is to even experience or relish Vrindavan, we need to have the right consciousness in the heart. It is better to preach in a place which you are assigned to than thinking of going and settling. That's, a, that's actually a comfortable this thing for your senses. I'll have darshan of uh, the Lord there. Not uh, What is the big deal in that? There's one uh, uh, devotee of Srila Prabhupada by name uh, Praghosh, Praghosh Prabhu. He was telling, he recollects this, it's there in uh, one of the Siddhan, that, that uh, memories of Prabhupada, that once Prabhupada, two things he says, very, very powerful thing. Uh, 1976 in New Vrindavan, which we visited. Prabhupada, 1976, of Prabhupada was not well. He's already very weak, frail and all. And he was taking rest. And he heard that some devotees have come from some different parts of uh, America. So knowingly that, you know, Prabhupada is not well, they didn't also want to disturb Prabhupada. But Prabhupada just thought, okay, let me meet them. So he called all of them. So they all were there. Prabhupada was barely able to speak. And uh, they, had, they had some conversation for 5-10 minutes. And these people thought, okay, the devotees thought, let's go. Let's not disturb Prabhupada. Then suddenly, uh, Prabhupada asked, anybody has any questions? Somebody asked some questions. Then Prabhupada said, can you get my Krishna book? So somebody brought the Krishna. For the next two and a half hours, Prabhupada was talking about Krishna. So Prabhosh, he says, Prabhupada never misses an opportunity to glorify Krishna. Never misses an opportunity. Even Satsurabh Maharaj, when he's writing the Lilamrata, he says about one incident where uh, he, Prabhupada had gone to an university which was filled with hippies. And uh, Prabhupada goes and says, so young boys and girls of America, I'm very thankful to you for giving me this opportunity to speak about Krishna. They have not given any opportunity, nothing. He is, Prabhupada wants to speak. He took that opportunity and he's just thanking and he started talking about Krishna. So pure devotee of the Lord never misses an opportunity to glorify the Lord. And in that connection, another thing which that Prabhosh is mentioning, there are devotees who are seated uh, close to Prabhupada. And they were looking at Prabhupada with awe. And there were devotees who came afterwards, but they were all book distributors. And when Prabhupada heard that they were book distributors, Prabhupada is looking with awe of those devotees. There is a difference. So those devotees who are staying close, they are looking in awe to Prabhupada, but his glance is on those who are doing the preaching work. That is the point which I was trying to say. You know, it is not like I am staying in Vrindavan or Jagannath. I am seeing you're seeing that's good. You are in awe of this, but actually the Lord is seeing who's going out and preaching his mission. He is more dear to me. Hare Krishna, Guru. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Uh, the, I, I just want to uh, express my gratitude to nityanand prabhu that actually the actually the incarnation of nityanand prabhu is completely different from uh, from his previous incarnation because he is the most merciful incarnation and uh, um, when when he came to this earth in the um, um, lakshman ji so he was actually very angry <laughs> and uh, <laughs> <He's> always angry <laughs> yeah. and then then uh, in the next incarnation he was in the form of the balram prabhu so he, in in that form also he was uh, very angry but when he came in the form of the nityanand prabhu he is completely different yeah true and uh, but the important thing to remember is like in that purport we were reading if somebody tries to serve Nityananda Prabhu and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu properly in the parampara, he can do even more. Like Prabhupada gives his own example that, you know, he could deliver so many guys and madhais. Not yeah. and the purport also is telling that the Vishnu Bhaktas are more 
compassionate or more powerful than Vishnu himself. But Vishnu Bhakta has become more powerful or more, uh, they can do more activities by the potency of Vishnu only. So if one is, you know, doing this activity of preaching, of spreading, of sharing this knowledge with us, he becomes a deserving recipient of this Krishna's mercy. That's the full point. And uh, one thing, of course, you know, the anger of uh, um, Ityananda Prabhu or uh, Balaram Tattva is very good for us. That anger um, is, a, is, a, is a mercy or a blessing for someone to advance in spiritual life. Not that Balaram or Lakshman was angry. He was angry. That's how Sugriva could awaken to his own position. Um, so if Guru's mercy comes in the form of chastisement, one should feel happy. Doesn't come to everyone. So we have uh, the uh, festival of devotional bliss will continue today in the afternoon at four. I request all of you to join at four p.m. We have uh, three hours of non-stop kirtan, harinam kirtan, harinam sankirtan ki, atyananda prabhu ki, and then there will be the third. The, the final session about uh, of our preparation of consciousness for Nityananda Trayadasi tomorrow. And tomorrow is the festival, fasting till noon. Let us take this opportunity to pray to Lord Nityananda, to Nityananda Prabhu, who is extremely merciful. If we just sincerely pray and really want the Krishna praying and nothing else, no, accolad no accolades, no praises, no this thing, no recognitions, genuinely, I don't want anything. What do, what do I do with this? I've been getting that, I've not been getting, and that is making me chaotic, that is making me disturbed. Forget about all those things. Let me do this. Let me hold on to Nityananda Prabhu's feet. Let me be engaged in devotional service in a humble mood. Definitely we will get the mercy of Nityananda. There's no doubt about it. I'll stop here. Uh, to, next week we will have our regular Bhavakum class. For joining. Nityananda Prabhu ki, Nityananda Traidasi Mahamahaksav ki, Shri Prabhupada 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 ki, Shri Prabh